My name is Ron Knott. I founded a company in 1982 to prevent lightning damage onto radio and television broadcast towers. I have been in broadcasting myself as an engineer since 1960, and I saw many needs uh, over the years, much damage to broadcasting equipment due to lightning. The standard lightning rod, which is normally what is put on top of the tower, uh, is good in that it directs a lightning rod or lightning strike down the metal of the tower to ground. However, it also causes a ma massive electromagnetic pulse which can induce uh, electromagnetic pulses into any surrounding wiring. By that I mean power wiring, telephone wiring, uh, audio wiring, anything else, and this can get into electronic equipment and damage it. We are not in the lightning rod business. We are, our products actually prevent the lightning strike by discharging the electric field up in the air. This is a very old principle, it goes back more than 250 years to Benjamin Franklin when he observed that a sharp point pointing up into the sky emits a, what he called a silent current. And it's a tiny stream of electricity that actually flows into the air. The only thing that he didn't have was the instrumentation to measure how much that electric current was. And we have learned over the years that if you put a whole large number of points pointing up into the air, that it has adequate capacity. His lightning rods sometimes attracted lightning rather than discharging. And so the technology of nowadays is to put a whole lot of points up there and bring the electric field voltage down below the threshold required for lightning. You're, it's done, here's a typical product right here. You can see a lot of little stainless steel wires projecting up into the air. When the storm cloud comes overhead, a thunderstorm cloud, uh, an enormous voltage develops between the bottom of the cloud and the surface of the earth. It can be up in the millions of volts and it gets to that point. Uh, electricity flows from each one of these little points. In the dark, you can actually see a blue glow flowing out into the air. And this uh, dissipates the field voltage down below the point where lightning will happen. There are lots of variations, such as on this tower here. This is a heavy duty unit right here that was the first product started in 1982 to, for tall radio and television broadcast towers. Worked very well. We've always had a one year warranty on these things and nobody has ever called us and said the thing didn't work, uh, we want our money back. The smaller unit is good for lower elevation needs, such as uh, automation systems out in the oil and gas industry. Most of the oil and gas industry is being automated nowadays, and as a consequence, uh, they need these things for the top of their mass. The one on the side here is a larger unit uh, it simply has more dissipation capacity. The farther out the wires are from the base and the more they're dispersed into the air, the better these things function. One thing that is absolutely necessary for these devices to function properly is a low resistance ground to the earth. This is necessary because an electric current actually flows through the metal uh, into these little points that goes out into the air. Bear in mind that the discharge current from these devices is relatively very small compared to the huge massive current of an actual lightning strike. A uh, lightning strike current can be from 10 to 30,000 amperes or more, but it's for an extremely short period of time, down in the few millionths of a second. The way we compensate for this is we discharge this electric field over a long period of time. Just as soon as the storm cloud approaches, the electric field begins to build and these devices begin to work. And they keep the electric field voltage down. And it's interesting in that the amount of energy that is uh, released in a serious lightning stroke is only good enough power to light a 100 watt bulb for about one minute. And what these devices do, they work over a period of uh, several minutes. And obviously, an electric light bulb only pulls about one ampere of current. The highest current that we know of that was measured in one of these devices, this one right here, was about 
four amperes, and that was a very extreme case. It's typically much less than that. So normally the tower metal is fully adequate to carry this discharge current. However, there may be instances where a copper conductor may be necessary to come down a tall structure. Uh, for instance, on a, a roof of a business or a house, we run a number 10 uh, copper wire down to one or more ground rods. And the ground rods must be uh, National Electric Code ground rods that are the eight feet long, five eighths inch diameter copper plated. Uh, you have to have a low resistance ground and this size of a ground rod is the only way that you're going to be assured of this uh, low resistance. It may take multiples and uh, ground resistance can be tested uh, we'll have to find someone in your neighborhood or your area that uh, can handle the, op uh, the, has the instrumentation and knows how to operate it for this purpose. Bear in mind that the taller a structure is, the more vulnerable it is because it penetrates deep, more deeply into the electric field between the earth and the cloud bottom. Electric field is measured in volts per meter going from the ground up to the bottom of the cloud and then when it exceeds about 10,000 volts per meter, you can have a lightning strike. And obviously, it doesn't take very many meters before you're into the millions of volts. And uh, so we have a variety of devices for different elevations. This one right here uh, is called the GS1 helostat, and it is good for a range of about 20 feet to 50 feet. Uh, whenever you go taller than that, you could use multiple units like this, or you can go to the heavier duty unit like this. This would be good for, let's say, uh, 200 feet and above. However, beyond 200 feet on a communications or broadcast tower, uh, a beacon light is required. And our company manufactures a product called an Eagle's Nest, which is a very large device that utilizes the mounting bolts of the a beacon, the tower beacon, to mount it, which makes it very convenient. No cutting, drilling, or welding is required. Uh, it attaches directly there. Uh, and uh, so for tall towers, uh, we recommend, tall, tall enough to have a beacon, we recommend the eagle's nest at the top. And then perhaps these, tower, these uh, GS3s on the side, because we learned many years ago that while you can protect the top of a tower from a lightning strike, at the same time, uh, you, while you protected the top on a very tall tower, you can have a strike come in sideways. And so we put these on the side at intervals of about 200 to 250 feet. This will success adequately uh, discharge that field alongside the tower as well as that at the top. Uh, we have these things on towers as tall as 2,000 feet, television towers. But they're on every kind of structure from uh, simply a pipe mast. This device here works good on automation systems where there's simply a pipe mast of about 20 feet supporting all of the equipment to 2,000 feet and all in between. And we can custom design a system for your structure, uh, whatever you need. We have. Uh, also, for AM broadcast towers, we have furnished uh, discharge devices that discharge the insulated wire segments. AM towers have to have the, the guy wires broken up with insulators, and we have successfully done this uh, in uh, very near Central America, Southern Mexico, where the storms were very severe. For AM broadcast towers, it's well known that all the guy wires must be broken up into segments with insulators. And we have learned by experience over many years that these wire segments will charge and then they will discharge over the insulators and flash into the tower and sometimes trip the station off the air. To, di to discharge these wires, we have made this small device up here with a special clamp that clamps onto the upper end of the guy wire on each segment and that will uh, work very well in discharging, uh, preventing this flashover. Uh, we have one very large system. We sold one into southern Mexico in the tropics down there where the storms were severe. And uh, these things work very, very well.
The only hard part is getting some guy crazy enough to go up there and put them on. <laughs> to sum up our lightning products, I need to tell you that it is very possible to prevent lightning from striking. A lot of people, uh, lightning rods are so traditional that they believe you must have a lightning rod, and this is not correct. If you have adequate uh, dissipation capacity on enough sharp points up in the air to discharge that electric field that goes up to the cloud, the voltage will be low enough that it will not reach the threshold of lightning, and we will prevent lightning rather than taking a lightning strike. Remember, lightning can be completely prevented from any structure, whether it's a tall broadcast or communications tower, a dwelling, a, bi a business, or any structure that projects up into the sky. Don't forget, lightning can be completely prevented, and you don't have to take any strikes on your structures, tall or otherwise. Towers, buildings, residences, and businesses can all be protected from lightning strike completely. You don't have to take lightning strikes at all. You can prevent them entirely with our products at Not Limited. Just contact us and we can help you protect your facility of any kind from lightning.